Hello Pisces and welcome to your tarot card reading for October 2023. Hello Pisces and welcome to your monthly reading for October. Let's go ahead and get started with an oracle card here. Let's see what comes through for Pisces. Youthful folly, impulsiveness, immaturity, bluffing, ignorance, learning, impatience, and reckless behavior. Okay. <laughs> I Normally I might take this as more of a warning, like a warning against impulsivity and that type of thing. But the way I'm feeling <laughs> in, intuitively is like, go have fun with your life. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm sensing. Just go have fun with your life. You don't have to be so composed and so put together and so perfect all the time. You know, one of the things we don't talk about enough with Pisces is that Virgo opposition. I think Virgo, uh, I think Pisces is one of the signs that is really hard on itself because of that Virgo kind of shadow. And you do expect a lot of yourself and you do expect, I, I would say, even use the word perfection a lot of times. And because Saturn is in your sign right now, there's a really strong desire to put together this perfect structure for your life and for your future. And maybe you are really thinking long term. But I also want to make sure that Pisces is enjoying themselves and maybe making a few little reckless mistakes here and there and not putting so much pressure on themselves because of that. Um, it, you know, I, I think you are learning, right? You have the learning word here. You're learning. And what be better way to learn than to try and fail? You know, what better way to learn than to put yourself out there and who, like, who cares if it works out or not? It's more about, are you out there? Are you actually playing the game or not? And if you are, then no one can say anything. If you are and they aren't, then they definitely can't say anything, you know? So let's see what else comes out here with the moon cards, a time for healing. And in a way, perhaps maybe this youthful folly is healing in and of itself. This really feels like it's relieving a lot of pressure or that this is a good time to relieve a lot of pressure. And by doing so, you will create space for a wholeness to kind of click together within yourself. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here at the tarot cards. What comes through here for Pisces? Okay, we've got a Knight of Swords. Emperor and a Ten of Swords. I like the Knight of Swords. I think that's you. I think you're the Knight of Swords or the Prince of Swords in this deck. Um, but it's on, it's you. It's a version of you that's on the way to becoming the Emperor. All right. So I'm seeing a trajectory here that this impulsivity or this, I don't, I don't know, bluffing, impatience, ignorance, immaturity. Again, I'm not really seeing those things as being negatives, even though the words are kind of negative. I kind of feel like that's what a Prince of Swords is supposed to be. It's supposed to be um, a little immature. It's supposed to be ignorant, but it's also supposed to be learning. And ignorance and learning sometimes can go hand in hand. I mean, I guess that depends, but it can. So here you are, maybe a little ignorant with what you're doing, but you're learning. And I think you want to learn. And I think you're throwing yourself in there. You're throwing yourself into the game somehow. You're going for it. You're giving it all you've got. And because of that, we do have kind of this really beautiful growth phase. I don't think this is going to really take all that long. These two cards are right next to each other. So it's not like this whole huge drawn out process. It's just a matter of getting yourself in there and making all the mistakes so that you can more rapidly mature. It's clear to me that Pisces has some kind of a, a task or a project that's going to need time and energy and attention and that that in and of itself is going to kind of play a bigger role in kind of a larger aspect of your life with the 10 of swords. Now I've been feeling this for a long time, not just for Pisces, but for a lot of people, but I think it speaks especially to Pisces because of the Saturn transit in your sign. And this will continue for the next couple of years, um, that you've really just hit this place where there's just nothing more 
for you out of a certain circumstance. And that's probably why you're like, this might be one of those months where you get really fed up because there's all, all this intensity from the eclipses that are going to be going on and you might get fed up and you may get frustrated and you may be like, ah, I just got to go do it. And you may throw yourself in maybe a little premature, but I think it's fine simply because you've been here for too long and you're sick of it, right? You're tired of the 10 of swords. You're tired of feeling like a victim or like you can't win or like you can't get on top or you can't earn the money or you can't find the person or you like, you can't get your head above water with something. And this is usually a, a, a driver for a lot of stuff in life. And sometimes, you know, we can get really, you know, triggered or snappy, or again, I like the impulsive word here because, because this can just get to that point where it is officially really uncomfortable, right? Either maybe we're embarrassed by it, or we're kind of ashamed that we're still here. We're still dealing with this problem. We haven't fixed it yet, whatever the case is. And then all of a sudden, one day we wake up and we say enough and boom, we throw ourselves into something. And this could be maybe one of the best things you've done for yourself all year. This could be one of the greatest acts of self-care that you do for yourself, right? Because it's leading you somewhere really great, which is toward the emperor's throne. So even though it may feel or be perceived as being a little childish or impatient or reckless, I don't think it's going to work against you the way often reckless behavior can work against you. Sometimes being reckless can pay off. You know, do you ever have to, do any of you have one of those friends? It's like they do the stupidest stuff, but man, they know how to get themselves places and they know how to meet those people. And like, they're the things that are so, I don't know, brazen, and yet it really works for them. I think this is one of those moments where you might be doing some brazen stuff, but it really works for you, okay? So let's see what else comes through for Pisces for October. I mean, don't be afraid to be brazen. And Ace, Ace of Cups has been coming out quite a bit this month. So is Three of Swords. I promise I shuffled the decks. <laughs> so we have beautiful Ace of Cups, and this is what I'm talking about. You throw yourself into something impulsively and look at what you get. You get an Ace of Cups. You get an opportunity. You get a chance. You get an open door. Now, the Five of Swords and the Three of Swords are a little bit more challenging, but it doesn't surprise me with the Ten of Swords, you know, because... This is the stuff that motivates us. This is the stuff that it like piles up. And if we don't really do anything to change it, if we just sit and we fester and we let it be, or we keep letting people do certain things to us or say certain things to us, or we continue just living in the same circumstance every single day and we don't do anything about it, we're going to kind of snap a little bit. And that's what I think is happening is Pisces is just snapping, not like psychologically or anything, but you're, you're, you're making a pretty abrupt pivot. All right. Now the three of swords, sometimes I think when we have that type of pain, when we have that type of betrayal or loss or disappointment, sometimes we think that healing might need to look like this whole, you know, deep inner shadow work, you know, child heal, inner child healing and all that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That stuff's great. It's wonderful. Go for it if that's where you're at. But I don't know that that's the type of healing that's really in the sky right now. Um, I think this just has a lot to do with that North node being in Aries. Uh, you don't really have a lot going on with that fourth house in Gemini. You just don't have a lot of aspects there or, or planetary transits there. So I just, I kind of think the healing, right? Time for healing. The healing really is found in this, like, just go do something else. It's found in redirecting the focus. It's found in new investments and new ways to spend your time and new creative projects that you want to participate in. It's found in being busy and talking to people and meeting new people and putting yourself in places that you're not normally in. Being in rooms you're not normally in. Having conversations you don't normally have. 
you know? And I, I think that, uh, the more and more we look at, it's weird that we have so many eyeballs here. It's like the more and more we look at the pain or the problem, the less and less likely we are to kind of be quick on our feet and, and take a leap of faith. Because there may be a moment, this probably coincides with the eclipses, which is the first one is coming up on the 14th as a solar eclipse in Libra in your eighth house. Um, I think there may be a moment or an opportunity that says, Pisces, you're either in or you're out. And there's a part of Pisces that's like, man, I really want to be in. I don't want to sit this one out. I don't want to just sit and fester and stew. Okay. I think movement is a really, really good thing. I think, um, changing up the routine is a really good thing. And I, again, I think talking to people that you don't always talk to is also a really good thing. I feel like there's something about perspective with this five of swords too. <laughs> this artwork is really creepy. I didn't <laughs> really notice. It's like this swords going through the eyeball here. Um, but it's, you know, I think it has to, the way you see something, you know, it has to do with your perspective and, and, and the way you see. And I think there's a lot happening there with this eclipse season too. Not to mention that the full moon eclipse, which is in Taurus is technically the moon is going to be conjunct Jupiter, although it's a very loose conjunction, but technically it is a conjunction nonetheless. Um, so there's kind of that expansion for you in that third house with that eclipse there, there's that expansion of perspective and, and sight, um, and the way you think, the way you think, the way you see things are certainly going to be an expansion of mind. And I don't necessarily see you getting proven wrong. It's just almost as though you realize that there was something so simple in terms of the way you saw something that was problematic and all it takes is just this one little tweak and that's it. And it opens a whole bunch of new doors. And I think this ace of cups makes you want to, you know, it makes you want to do that. It's like you, you get a job offer, you have a good conversation with someone or you meet someone, you know, maybe there's a potential romantic partner that comes in and it's just like, you know, this is much better to spend my time and energy on than this. Cause this is so played out and so dead and so old in my life. It's like crusty and scabby. And I just, I don't, I like, I don't want this anymore. So the focus goes into that ACE of cups and the Prince of swords is all for it. Okay. So what else? What else for Pisces for October? Oh, I left my door open today and now all these bugs are in here. I'm so annoyed with myself. It just like open like a little crack. Okay, so we have the sun, we have the queen of cups. I don't know what the deal is with this artwork with all these eyeballs everywhere. Like so many eyeballs, there's like four in here. <laughs> so that third eye stuff, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, anywho. All right. Well, we love the sun. Obviously this is a really positive omen of success and being illuminated. There's an, uh, you know, support in terms of your own positive self-expression. And I do think your impulsivity is a form of that self-expression. It feels pure. You know, this feels unadulterated. It feels authentic. It doesn't feel like you're trying to be anyone for anything or be, yeah, be, be, you're not trying to be anything for anyone. If I could talk, you're not trying to project anything. You're not trying to project a specific image. I will tell you that Saturn in your sign can be a, a, a truly humbling, um, experience. Uh, I think more than any other planet, Saturn truly demands truth and realism and authenticity. It doesn't handle the fakey, fakey stuff very well. And I just think right now, Pisces, you're, you're forced to come to terms with like who you really are and who you really want to be. And if there's something that you don't like about your life, it's not necessarily something you don't like about yourself more. So it's probably about your circumstances. When you look in the external world, you say, well, I don't like, you know, my bank account. I'm not happy with this relationship. I'm not happy with my living situation, my career, whatever. So you look at these circumstances and you say, this is not a true expression of who I feel I am. It's not a true expression. It's not my, my authentic voice. 
And I'm not saying you are going to be completely turning your life upside down in October, but I do think that impulsive urge, it's going to start something. And I love when we start something in a cardinal season and Libra is very much a cardinal sign and being cardinal air, there's a, a lower density here. And I feel like things can take off really fast. Um, so it is a good time to implement. It is a good time to work and to change and to do this kind of impulsive stuff. Um, although I don't think it's like completely, uh, like I want to say it, like, it's not like a, an uneducated thing. It's not like you're, I mean, I know I have the word ignorance here, but you still have your life experience. Obviously you still have all the healing you have done up to this point. So it's not like you're going in completely blind, right? You may be ignorant about what's to come, but you're not ignorant about the choice itself, the choice and the impulsiveness to jump right in. And I think that feels natural for Pisces. I think it feels right. It feels like you're getting back to yourself. And with the queen of cups, there also seems to be a really strong emotional connection um, with this new direction that you're wanting to go. Now, please keep in mind, this is probably not going to speak to every aspect of your life. All right. It's probably going to be one area, but it's probably been something that you've been thinking about for a long time. The queen of cups is a card that's ruled by the moon. It's a Cancerian quality. And the moon is a highly retentive energy. And it takes a while sometimes for the moon to really expose what it's really thinking. I often feel that the moon is, you know, it harbors truth, but sometimes it's so abstract that it's hard for our conscious mind to really understand the information that's there. Okay. Cause it's more rooted in just like, you know, a vibration. So we have to consciously extract from that vibration and make sense of it. And sometimes that takes time. But I think this is one of those moments where, okay, something's been brewing. You've been having a feeling, you've been thinking about it. You've been trying to figure out for a long time, you know, and now it's like, well, this is the time because you kind of hit a little bit of a breaking point here because this just simply will not do. This is not productive stuff here. And I think that's annoying for Pisces. Now keep in mind that Saturn near the end of the month is going to be moving really, really slow. Um, he officially stations direct early November. So we're going to have a little switcheroo in your sign with Saturn. So that may feel a little bit better. I think Saturn is one of the planets that's better when it's moving direct, but that, I guess that's debatable. That's not like blanket statement for everyone, but I do think generally it is better. Um, so the slowdown of Saturn, you're probably going to feel. And with the slowdown of Saturn with the King of coins here, there's going to be a lot of, hold on. I lost what I was going to say. To me, this feels more like perseverance. And I think this goes hand in hand with the emperor. Like I say, this is not a long drawn out thing. You may take an impulsive action or jump into something really fast or do something unexpectedly, but it's not like it's going to be a whole lifetime's worth of development. All right. You're going to jump in, you're going to make a few mistakes, and then you're going to get a really good handle on it. And then it's going to make sense in your life. It's not going to be some like weird thing that has no place. It's going to have a place. You're going to feel aligned. It's going to feel right. You know, you're going to know that what you've done is right for you and right for the people that you love, your family and all that. I do see something being lucrative. I love the sun. I love the king of coins because it feels, you know, materialistically viable, profitable. So yeah, it might be a little crazy, but it's going to work out. You're going to land on your feet. You're going to find stability with it. It might be a start off a little rocky. It's very, very short term and it will be, I don't know. I think for some, for some Pisces, this is going to be like proving to yourself that like you can do it because maybe a lot of this stuff has really kept something at an arm's length. You know, you've been, uh, trying to get something like, let's say a relationship or money, but you've had certain experiences that created some type of 
resistance or put a wall or a wedge in between you and that thing that you're wanting to manifest, right? And this is just, like you say, he's just like, just enough, 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 enough. I, I don't want to be in this place anymore. This sucks. I want something better for myself. And you do, and you will. So I don't know. I feel this is really positive, although it can certainly have some turbulence. And, and I, would, I would be lying to you if I said that October is going to be super smooth. I mean, it might be for a few of you, but for many of you, I don't think it's going to be super smooth. All right, that new moon eclipse in Libra is happening on the 14th, all right, just a couple of days after Mars moves into Scorpio. So Mars is going to be really, really strong in the chart. So we're kind of switching from like a Mercury strong chart to now a Mars strong chart. Um, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> so that kind, of, that kind of switch is kind of a big deal. And, uh, so there is a little bit of turbulence to be expected, but very short lived. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull out the clarifiers. So for those of you who are new, we're going to pull out a whole bunch of cards and we're going to talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards in the comprehensive reading. And the link for that can be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. So if you want to join, you are welcome to do so. So, okay. We have the Pisces card. I like the pay, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Knights. I do like the nights because it makes me feel that youthful energy coming through. All right, beautiful. Environment is also very supportive. So let's start with the Prince of Swords. What else does Pisces need to know about the Prince of Swords? Queen of Wands, Seven of Cups. Queen of Wands is funny because it's a Mars. It's an Aries card. So yeah, we definitely have that Aries impulsivity coming out. A lot of Aries too with the Emperor too. So we got the Nine of Cups, beautiful. Eight of Wands, love it. And Three of Wands. King of Cups, Ace of Coins, Queen of Coins, the World, Nine of Coins. Okay, so we've got Nine of Cups and Nine of Coins, which tells me that Pisces, October is probably going to be a pretty good month. Oh, another Five of Swords. Okay, Five of Cups. This is all driven by things you don't like in your life. Nine of swords. This is, this is where this is all stemming from. Ace of wands. Love it. Love to see it. Knight of swords. Again. Magician. And seven of swords. Was it, oh, 10 of coins. Was this, I forget which reading it was, Pisces. Maybe it wasn't you, but if it was you last month where the title of the video was Success is the Swedish Revenge, it certainly feels like a carryover. I'll have to double check that. I could be wrong. Uh, seven of coins, we got 10 of coins, we have seven of coins, and we have a four of wands, another indication of stability there. Five of wands, there's the chaos. 10 of swords, again, not surprising. Um, and a page. And then we have the star, beautiful, the hanged man, and beautiful queen of swords. Okay, Pisces, this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you're more than welcome. Thank you all so much. You guys know I love you. Have a great October, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.